What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now I say this is a Detroit Lions video. It's going to be more of an Indianapolis Colts video. Obviously the Lions and the Colts clash at Ford Field this coming Sunday. And as it is Wednesday and we are only a few days away from this matchup taking place, I thought it would be a good idea to go over this Colts team, look at what they do well, what they don't do well, what the Lions can take advantage of, and what the Lions need to be wary of when it comes to this Colts team. Now, before we do get into talking about the Colts' strengths, weaknesses, where the Lions have advantages and disadvantages at, if you are new to the channel and are enjoying this Detroit Lions content, please consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel. It only takes two seconds out of your day to do so, and it helps me work. It helps this channel out so, so much. It helps me out so much. I would be greatly appreciative for it, but with all that being said, Let's get into talking about this Colts team, taking a deep dive at this Colts team and what and see what they've accomplished so far in the 2020 season and see where their strengths and weaknesses lie. Now, this week, as I mentioned, the 3-3 three and three Detroit Lions do welcome the 4-2 and two Indianapolis Colts into the Motor City for a clash at Ford Field. Now, you know, the Indianapolis Colts over the 2020 season have obviously been a pretty dangerous threat in the AFC. They have a winning record after six weeks of playing football. They're coming off a of bye week, so they're healthy. They have extra time to prepare for Detroit, and this is going to be one, this is probably going to be the toughest game of this seven-game stretch for the Detroit Lions. You know, the Falcons are a one-win team team. The Jaguars are a one-win team. The Vikings we play next week are a one-win team. This is really the only winning team we play for a couple more weeks, and this is a game that if the Lions can win, they can hold their heads very high, and if they lose, they're going to lose a lot of momentum and a lot of, you know, confidence after this game if they do end up falling to the Colts. Now, taking a look at this Indianapolis Colts offense, it's not necessarily a very good offense. Now, the Indianapolis Colts quarterbacks average a 69.3 completion percentage on the season, which is sixth in the NFL. However, they've only passed for 1,591 yards, which is 16th in the NFL. They only have seven passing touchdowns, which is 28th in the NFL. And they've thrown six interceptions on the season, which is 19th in the NFL. So this Colts passing game is pretty average, to be honest. I mean, obviously, they have a very high completion percentage, but they're 16th in yards. They're 28th in passing touchdowns with only seven on the season. And they obviously they've thrown six interceptions, which isn't very good either if they've only played in six games. So, I mean, I think the Lions defense can definitely take down this Colts passing offense. They don't look super elite. Their wide receivers aren't really performing. Phillip Rivers doesn't really have the strongest arm anymore. I think that this secondary can have a pretty good day against a pretty lackluster Colts passing offense. And I think that this Lions defense, if they continue to play the way they've been playing, can have a very successful day versus a Indianapolis Colts team that is very, very lackluster and very underperforming on offense. You know, you might look at that and say, okay, they don't have a great pass offense, but what about their rushing offense? Well, the Colts rushing offense isn't really good either. And keep in mind, they've only played in six games. So they've played in a couple less, they've played in less games than a couple of other teams. So the stats might be a little skewed. The rankings might be a little skewed in this video, but the Colts rush, the Colts have only rushed this season for 588 yards, which is 31st in the NFL. They only have five touchdowns on the season, which is 25th in the NFL. And they average 3.6 yards a carry on the ground, which is 32nd, dead last in the NFL. So their passing offense is is pretty average, pretty lackluster, and their rushing offense is really, really bad. Their rushing offense is one of the worst in the NFL, which is pretty surprising considering that the Colts offensive line is absolutely elite. They've only allowed six sacks on the season, which is the least in the NFL, and this Colts offensive line is really good. They might have the best offensive line in the NFL, so the fact that they are not a very good rushing team surprises me quite a bit, and again, the stats are probably skewed a little bit, but one game is not going to take you from the worst rushing offense in the league, the worst rushing attack in the league to even average. So this Colts rushing game is really, really bad. This Colts passing offense is average at best. And I mean, with the performances that the Lions have been putting up over the past couple of weeks, I think that this is an offense that the Detroit Lions should absolutely be able to shut down for a majority of the game. I mean, we saw them shut down Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley and Todd Gurley for a majority of a football game. So there's no reason that they can't shut down Phillip Rivers and... I don't even know Jonathan Taylor, I think, is the leading back for the Colts. And, you know, T.Y. Holm is having a pretty down season and some other lackluster, you know, guys for the Colts. Like, I mean, there's no reason the Lions defense should have a bad game against this very, very below average Colts offense. 
Now, in saying that, there is a reason that the Colts are four and two, right? If, and if the def or if the offense isn't very good, the defense has to be really good for you to be four and two. And this is where the Colts' strengths lie. This defense, you know, going over this defense, they're going to hear a lot of firsts, a lot of seconds, a couple average stats. But overall, this Colts defense has been elite in the NFL season, and there is a reason that there are some people calling and saying that this could be the best defense in the NFL right now. Now, the Indianapolis Colts passing defense over the first six games of their NFL season. They've given up only 1,198 passing yards on the season, which is the fewest in the NFL. They've only given up seven touchdowns, which is the second fewest in the NFL. And they have 10 interceptions on the season, which is the most in the NFL. This Colts team is the best pass defense in the NFL, bar none. They've given up the fewest yards, they have the most interceptions, and they've only given up the second most touchdowns in the NFL with seven on the season. Like this passing offense for, or this passing defense for the Colts is absolutely elite. And, you know, it's going to be very tough for Matthew Stafford and this Lions offense to pass on the Indianapolis Colts as they are so good. They are so dominant in the air. When saying that they have an elite pass defense, they have an elite secondary play, their defensive line, surprisingly to me, hasn't really been performing all of that well this season. They only have 13 sacks on the season, which is tied or which is 18th in the NFL. They only have 32 quarterback hits, which is 21st. They have 23 tackles for loss, which is 23rd. So, I mean, they have an average pass rush, a little bit below average of a pass rush. But, you know, their pass defense, their secondary is elite. And why I, you know, why the stats might not be there for the defensive line, I definitely think they have a role to play. I definitely think they have a huge part to play when it does come to, you know, that secondary's success. Now, if you look at, you know, you look at the Colts and you say, okay, well, we're not going to be able to pass the ball, so we might have to run the ball a lot. Their rushing defense doesn't get much worse than their passing defense, as the Colts' rushing defense has only given up 530 yards on the season, which is tied for third, or which is third in the NFL. They only have given up four rushing touchdowns, which is the fewest given up in the NFL, and they only allow 3.5 yards per carry on defense, which is tied for, or which is fourth in the NFL. Teams can't pass on the Colts. Teams can't run on the Colts. Yeah, they might have a little bit of time in the pocket, but where are you going to go with the football? I mean, this defense for the Indianapolis Colts is elite. I mean, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's above average. It is a top three defense in the NFL statistically, and they have been playing very, very well. And they are the reason that this or that this Indian Indianapolis team is four and two, and they are a huge part in why this Indianapolis team could very well make the playoffs when it comes down to it. So I think the Lions have a great advantage on offense. I think they're much more explosive. They're much more high power. They have much better weapons. They have a much better quarterback. If you look at the defense for the Colts. I mean, yeah, the Lions defense has been playing great, but the Colts have the best passing defense in the NFL. They have a top five rushing defense in the NFL. They don't get to the quarterback super often. They don't necessarily get huge splashy plays from their front seven, but it doesn't matter. Like the Colts aren't allowing rushing yards. The Colts aren't allowing passing yards. They aren't allowing touchdowns. They're getting takeaways. Like this defense is very tough to score on. This defense is very tough to beat. And you know, they're, they're obviously, as I said, a huge reason why the Colts are a contender right now and a huge reason that the Colts are currently 4-2 and two and looked at as one of the better teams in the AFC. Now, no Lions video would be complete without a special teams unit or without a special team segment so that we can brag about how good Jack Fox is. But, you know, looking at the Colts punt and kick return stats, the Colts average about 10 yards per punt return, which is ninth in the NFL. The Lions are 8th in the NFL. I don't have the exact number, but they are 8th. They are one spot ahead of the Colts by a very, very slim margin. The Indianapolis Colts also averaged 29.9 punt or yards per return on kickoffs, which is second in the NFL. For a reference, the Detroit Lions are seventh in that category. So the, the Indianapolis Colts are pretty good at returning kicks. They are pretty good at returning kickoffs. They did return one free touchdown already this season, which is something the Lions haven't done. But again, the Lions have a very good special teams unit. They have been really good at punt coverage. They have been really good in kickoff coverage, especially last week. So I'm not super concerned about giving up huge yards on kick. I'm giving up huge yards on kick and punch returns for the Colts, but to compare them to the Lions, they're very, very similar. They're better at kick returns. They're a little bit worse at punt returns, but they have a very good special teams as well. Kicking for the Detroit Lions, or kicking for the Indianapolis Colts this season, they are 88.9% on field goal percentage, which is 16th in the NFL. They are also 100% on extra points tied with the Detroit Lions at first place. 
for punting they average about 47 point, they average about 47 yards per punt which is 13th in the nfl so they're no jack fox i mean their punter is no jack fox he doesn't average no 53 yards a punt but you know this colts this colts special teams is pretty good as well i'd say they're above average as a special teams unit so this colts team has an average offense that you can definitely win with they have an elite defense and as we all know defense wins championships and they have an above average special teams which you know I think that they can definitely contend with the Lions for saying they're one of the better special teams units in the NFL. So if you look at the advantages and the disadvantages that the Lions have, I mean, they definitely have an advantage when it comes to the offense. I think that this our defense can definitely shut down their offense. And I think if we, I think if it does come down to it, I think this Lions team can absolutely be more explosive and put up more points than this Colts offense is capable of. You know, the Colts definitely have the advantage on defense. I mean, our defense, as good as it's been the last couple of weeks, does not even compare to this Colts team, does not even compare to to what this Colts team has accomplished. And I think our special teams are pretty comparable. I think we're better at punting and coverage on those punters, you know, but I think the Colts are also really good at, you know, they're very reliable on field goals. They are very, you know, good at uh, kick and punt returns just like the Lions are. So I think there they're pretty dead even. And, you know, I think this game can go either way. To me, this game is a 50-50. I don't have as much confidence as I had in, you know, the, maybe the Jags or the Falcons game, but I also, I'm not saying that we're going to lose. I'm not, I don't have as you know, few, I don't have as little confidence as I maybe had going into that Packers game or maybe going into that Arizona Cardinals game. This is a game that I think is an absolute flip of the coin. I think it's going to come down to who wins the trench battles. And, you know, so far we know how good the Colts, we know how good the Lions trenches have been playing. We know how good our run game can be. We know how good our defensive line and our run stopping can be, but the Colts have an elite offensive line. They have an elite defensive line. I mean, they have been playing really well and all of the games that they've won is because they win the trenches is because they win in the trenches. And I think that's what this game is going to come down to. This will be a very tough game for the Lions to win. This will be a really tough one. And if they can walk out of Ford Field in after this Sunday as a four and three football team, they should have a lot of confidence because if they can manage to pull off a victory and probably an upset victory at that over the Indianapolis Colts, I mean, that's going to show you exactly how good this team can be. This week is the Lions' first true test after the bye. They've had not, not warm up games, but they've had kind of an easier game in Jacksonville. And obviously, the defense was tested during the Atlanta Falcons game, but the offense kind of had their way for a majority of that game. So this is really the Lions' first big test after the bye week. This is a huge game for the Lions. If they can go in and upset the Indianapolis Colts, that will give this team a lot of confidence and a lot more momentum for the rest of the season. And even if they play this team very, very close, I will not be disappointed if we lose this game. You know, this is a game that I think the Lions probably will lose because the Colts just have such a suffocating defense that I don't know with our predictable play calling unless something improves drastically over the next couple of days. I don't know how much better this offense can play from last week. And if we can't be more predictable, if we are still bland, if we are still very vanilla on offense, this Colts defense will eat us alive. And it won't matter how many points the Phillip Rivers and the Indianapolis Colts put up. If the Lions can't put up enough points to match that, it's not going to matter. So Phillip Rivers could only put up 10 points on the game. But if our offense can't score in this game, we have absolutely zero chance to win. You know, I, I as I said, I think this is a 50-50 game. I think this is a game the Lions can win. I don't think this is a game the Lions will win. Unfortunately, I think they will fall to four and three. But even if they play this team very close, which I think they will, they should hold their heads very high. I mean, the Lions are going with, going in as a young team on a hot streak. They're learning how to win. And I would not be necessarily surprised if the Lions go in and make moves. And I would not necessarily be surprised if the Lions go out and get a victory in week, in week eight, like we've seen them do the previous two weeks. Now, with all that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. If you are new to the channel and are enjoying the Detroit Lions content, as I said in the beginning, please consider subscribing to the channel. It only takes two seconds out of your day and helps the channel out more than you could know. But with all that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. If, if there is Lions news before tomorrow, then I will obviously make a video letting every single person know. But until then, that is all I have for you guys right now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you all tomorrow with more Lions content. Bye guys.